All right, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sotko here. Welcome back to the channel. Got a whole bunch of good news stuff for you today. As usual, we are going to talk about the Syscoin hack, which was kind of more of an exploit slash glitch. And then we're going to talk about the Bitcoin gold hard fork, which I'm kind of excited about. I'm always excited when a uh, coin developer decides to uh, evade ASIC mining and disrupt their normal uh, distributed mining uh, so uh, let's talk about this. So this occurred yesterday. Um, Syscoin was not hacked, but a series of events led to confusion. A periodic uh, erratic behavior on the Syscoin blockchain coincided with unusual trading patterns, uh, to say the least, on Binance, ending up uh, filling an order, selling 11 Sys at 96 Bitcoin per Syscoin. So basically one Bitcoin, uh, or excuse me, one Syscoin was worth... 96 Bitcoin uh, at the time. So basically what happened is that the Syscoin uh, blockchain um, was uh, upgrading to 3.0.6, uh, the QT wallet, and then afterwards the network, uh, a so-called super block, paying out staking awards to verifying nodes. And those nodes that still ran the 3.0.5 froze. So afterwards, the Syscoin network started to produce abnormally large blocks uh, while noticing activity, suggesting withdrawing from a large Binance wallet. It was around the same time that Syscoin team alerted Binance for a possible attack against exchanges, and this potential attack, still not clarified, coincided with the anomalies on the Syscoin network. Um, so 96 BTC, so $600,000, is a lot to pay for anything. Uh, so let's see what uh, Syscoin is supposed to be at. Uh, 20, 22 cents, 22 cents. Uh, and somebody somebody basically somehow paid uh, 96 Bitcoin for, for one Syscoin. Uh, I'm not sure who or how that happened entirely, but uh, let's keep reading because, wow, that's a lot. Um, so the first signs that something was astir emerged on Tuesday evening when Syscoin noted that it had detected unusual activity blocks uh, or on its blockchain. Uh, it was initially suggested that a block was mined that somehow created one billion new Syscoin. Hmm. Uh, given that the total supply is, uh, is only set at 888 million, this ought to have been impossible. Uh, it's now understood, however, that the attackers were simply moving the same 40 million sys around. Uh, so as reported by a member of the Syscoin team, as such, the attack was not a hack in the conventional sense, uh, even if the end result was kind of the same. Uh, so in recent weeks, a number of blockchains have been compromised before the funds were sent to Binance to launder. But 51% attacks were usually used as the case with Zencash. Intriguingly, the Syscoin hack came just one day after blockchain security protocol Blue claimed that half of the top 50 cryptocurrencies were vulnerable to destructive flaws. Oh, geez, are they? Uh, it promised to make the information public before claiming it had delayed the release to allow exchanges to make security preparations. Um, so Binance CEO CZ promised a full post-mortem after the exchange re-enabled trading on Wednesday. Uh, so they had actually stopped trading entirely, uh, and they got rid of their API keys. And I'm not sure if they actually re-implemented the API feature of the exchange, which meaning, uh, in a nutshell, is basically, you know, one way to have your bot uh, connect to the exchange. It's how you connect your bot to the exchange using your API. You can do other things with it. Uh, but uh, so they, they removed that because they, they aren't saying exactly what happened yet. Uh, but that it has to do with the API keys. Uh, so likely it was bots doing some kind of nefarious purpose on Binance, and we will find out probably sometime this week. And again, it'll probably be on my channel. I know this was a pretty late episode, uh, but life sometimes gets in the way. Um, so they re-enabled trading uh, today, Wednesday. Uh, Binance has promised to roll back irregular trades and offer zero fee trading to irregular trading. Uh, the exchange tweeted the news accompanied by the hashtag Seifu. Where have I heard that before? And the safe. Ah, uh, yes. Um, in reference to a rising crypto meme spawned by a previous CZ typo in which he assured users that funds are safe. 
and the safe. In March, Binance was hit by a similar API-based attack. On that occasion, using Viacoin, um, using compromised APIs, the attackers set ridiculously high sell orders on the victim's accounts, dumped their illicitly uh, obtained crypto on them, and then cash out. So basically what happened with the Viacoin thing, I remember that, I think it was part of my channel, uh, that users used, AP basically hackers used API keys. Uh, so it, it mostly affected people that were using bots on Binance. Uh, although I did hear some reports of people that didn't have any a API keys at all, or maybe they had enabled API keys at some point and then they forgot about it. Either way, and then the hackers got a hold of their accounts and they sold all of their altcoins um, and then what they did with all of the money, so if you had $1,000 in altcoins, they sold your altcoins, got $1,000 on your account, and then bought Viacoin with it and super, super pumped it. Um, in a way, uh, it was kind of a kind of a genius attack. I don't, I don't mean to uh, promote that sort of thing, but it was quite unique in how they did it. Um, and so basically, they were holding Viacoin, then they sold everybody's altcoins with their API keys that had bots, and then they, they made those accounts accounts by Viacoin and then they sold their Viacoin and took off with it. Um, so this is the one minute chart. Let me show you this. This is really interesting of what happened to Sis. Uh, and I thank the user of the Twitter for this. As you can see, pumping up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It is it is really rocking. It's not even at one BTC yet. Uh, not even close. Not even close. Wow, wow, wow. So basically, uh, this is the point at which 1BTC occurs uh, somewhere down here. I would imagine a fifth of this. And you can see it got up to about, uh, oh, let's say, 12, 13 BTC. But you can see this massive candle here. The most This is, has to be the most massive candle in history. Um, I, I would not be surprised. Uh, because at 96 BTC, that is $600,000 uh, up from... Uh, let's just say what it was at the time, probably like 20 cents, 22 cents, something like that. So uh, it went to 96 BTC. Now, we don't really see that that pump uh, too, too crazy-like. Uh, even on coin market cap, you could see that it just wasn't long enough for it to really average it out. But just before that, you were looking at about 20 cents, 18 cents, and then somebody started pumping it like crazy. Um so it's easily the biggest, that has to be the, one of the biggest pumps of all time. From from 20 cents to $600,000 is, is, is an exponential increase. Uh, there, there's a lot of powers attached to that, let me just say. Uh, so now moving on to different news here. Bitcoin gold hard fork implements a new mining algorithm. So the new mining algorithm is no longer Equihash. It is called Equihash BTG. Uh, so pretty similar but equash btg a new one regardless so now uh all the z9 mini miners from ant main uh or excuse me bitmain um and the InnoSilicon miner um the zcash InnoSilicon miner and any other that happen to be coming out of the woodwork will no longer be able to hash bitcoin gold so uh that's that's actually pretty cool because now your graphics cards will be uh back to being profitable with ecohash particularly with bitcoin gold uh again uh you know the difficulties rising with zcash and the more and more of these asic miners that are being created and then shipped out to people and whenever they're plugging them in that's that's when the uh, that's when the difficulty is rising. So the more and more that, that get out, the, the higher it's going to be. So that means that Zcash, uh, Z Classic, Komodo, uh, Zencash, uh, those are all Equihash, and those are all being mined by ASIC miners right now. But now Bitcoin Gold, boom, it's done. Uh, so the uh, the hash rate of Bitcoin Gold will probably drop pretty drastically. So they said on Wednesday, which is today, um, that it successfully upgraded its network in a hard fork, changing its current proof of work algorithm to from Equihash to Equihash Bitcoin Gold in an attempt to keep away from ASIC miners. Now, Bitcoin Gold isn't the most amazing coin in the world, but it oftentimes is pretty profitable. So if you're using a program such as... Uh, um, uh, awesome miner. It will show you, usually when you start to mine Equihash, you're just mining the broad Equihash algorithm. And whatever coin within that algorithm 
that is the highest at the time you will be mining. And it will only switch algorithms to a, to, to Lira 2 or something else if, if that is dramatically higher based on what you set it at. So you could be within that Equihash algorithm. You, you know, Zencash could be the top for, uh, for, for a couple hours. And then Bitcoin Gold could be the top. Uh, so um, this is going to be kind of good so that once all these programs and stuff come out to, uh, with, with updates with Equihash, Bitcoin Gold, uh, your GPU should do fairly well with with uh, Bitcoin Gold. So I'm I'm excited to see you know what the profits are going to be on that. Uh, they're not going to be anything too crazy because the market's so low, but they might be a little bit better. You might be getting better shares now uh, that there is an ASICs attached to it, considering there was a 51% attack with Bitcoin Gold. So obviously that can be done. Um, so they also upgraded a difficulty adjustment algorithm to make its blockchain more responsive to hit to shifts in hash power. The full upgrade happened at, uh, at block 536,200, which after being mined, unlocked Bitcoin uh, Equihash or uh, Equihash BTG. So Equihash 144.5 or whatever. Um, so the upgrade was supported by several exchanges, including OKX, Binance, HitBC, uh, Bitfinex. In May, Bitcoin Gold uh, speeded up the planned full update after its network suffered multiple 51% attacks, which led to the theft of more than 18 million from various platforms. So that is a thing. Um, so if, you, if you're if you using Awesome Miner or something like that, and you happen to see maybe an update from the program or some kind of other program, maybe NiceHash will end up doing it as well. So make sure you guys are upgrading uh, your your mining programs if you're not using a standalone like, uh, like Claymore or something like that. Uh, so next in the news, the Pirate Bay returns to crypto mining through visitors' browsers. So if you guys don't remember this, uh, the Pirate Bay at one point um, took away their ads and they put on a, uh, a hidden, I think it was like a JavaScript, like Monero miner or something like that. And um, people hated it. People, people really, really hated it. Uh, not that you spend too much time on the Pirate Bay anyway. You, I mean, really, you just log on and you just download what you want and then you leave it it's not kind of it's not a website that you stay on for hours at a time or at least uh not me uh but uh people didn't like that so they got rid of it pretty fast and they just put back the ads but now apparently they are coming back and uh deciding that uh maybe they were making more uh and they're not making enough so either way so right now there's a silent war against privacy websites involving advertisers that keep banning them due to the association with copyright infringement uh, for most of these sites, the only way to really to fight back was to accept donations or require membership fees, often in crypto, uh, because they're because of the because they are the pirate bay. Essentially, they can't get ads on their website or at least the good stuff to give them enough money to keep going. So they're going to have to do this. Um, so the pirate bay, perhaps the most famous piracy website of them all, was having none of that, having received a paltry 0.26 Bitcoin ever since it opened its wallets for donations. So just seventeen hundred and fifty bucks, which is great, uh, but they've opened it up a, a while, probably many, many months ago. Uh, the website came up with plans to mine crypto using its visitor CPU through its scripted ex uh, executed in their browsers. So nearly a year ago, we caught the Pirate Bay doing this to its users as something we suspected was a test. Now it seems like the website considers it worthwhile to implement the script permanently. So users uh, recently noticed this and took to the pirate forum uh, to complain about their CPUs heating up. The original poster pointed out that the website is using a short JavaScript snippet that throttles the mining to 0.9, which would still use the majority of CPU power available on the computer to mine. Um, so, uh, you know, some people are saying it's no big deal. So who spends more than 10 minutes on the Pirate Bay anyway? You get your uh, shit and then you leave, uh, said user CRR, which is kind of true. Uh, the going argument is that the, the Pirate Bay isn't the kind of website where people spend a significant amount of time. This in contrast to, uh, to a case we saw at the end of 2017 where over a billion users who spent on four different streaming sites were subject to this kind of treatment. So after the initial reply, forum users who misunderstood how the Pirate Bay works, so they would spend plenty of time downloading a torrent file while the site mines using their computers. However, the, the, the script only works when the site is open in their browsers, not when they are using a torrent client to download their data. Who would have thought that that's how it works? Uh, all right. Um, 2018, let's step Let's step through the door, people. Uh, the threat ultimately culminated with a super moderator getting the final word on the matter. Yeah, yeah, whatever. That uh, The time it takes to download a torrent is completely and utterly irrelevant. All you require from the, uh, from the Pirate Bay is a magnet link, 
Open the site, find a torrent, click the magnet link, close the site, end of minor. If you were ever on the Pirate Bay for more than five minutes or so, you're doing it wrong. Um, I guess. I mean, that seems kind of... Uh, all right. But since this spat took place, we had a look at the Pirate Bay's website, look through its code. As of right now, it appears that the staff uh, um, for the site have kept the minor. Um... So the minor only works when we disable ad blocking for the site. Interestingly enough, the site still shows advertisements along with the minor. Uh, so they still do have some advertisements, but they're likely inadequate for their uh, for their income that they want to keep the site open and keep it running and pay people, I suppose, uh, which makes sense. Um, on the Intel quad core CPU, the, wow, the Intel quad core uh, <laughs> We that's a that's a great model. Uh, we used in our minor investigation. That's in our in our four door car, our four door car with with a with a hundred and twenty eight horsepower engine. That car, that one, yeah. The task power, the task manager registered no more than forty percent usage. Why the website continues to show ads alongside the minor is a mystery. Probably money. What do you mean it's a mystery? But it probably has to do with the Pirate Bay preparing for the worst in in the case the advertising service it uses withdraws its consent to display ads on the site. Uh, yeah, yeah. Go figure. Uh, it's it's called money. Uh, I don't. Uh, it's not. It's not really. It's not really a mystery. Two hundred seventy-four billion market cap. Uh, earlier today, we were at two seventy-five. So we're not doing too bad here. We are slowly moving up the list. Um, most coins are up, all in the green here, except for some randos. Uh, we got Tezos moving into the nineteenth slot there, uh, but it's down a little bit. Steam's down a little bit. Um, nothing too crazy. Our chain, uh, Bitcoin private down, down as usual. Oh, oh, Bitcoin private. Um, but everything's looking pretty good uh, so far. Uh, we got some mad pumps here with Ethos for sure, and Electronium's getting um, getting some love that it uh, that it needs, but it's still only 1.5 cents, so it's not doing too hot. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and as usual, I will see you guys next time.